Great. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So nice to see all of you here. Residents of Bukit Panjang and Holland Bukit Timah GRC, welcome to our STP rally. I'm really, truly humbled to see so many of you here to want to spend your time to give us the opportunity to share and present our alternative views to you. The SDP has been working hard since the last general election to formulate several policies in education, housing, healthcare, and several others. We believe these policies can improve the quality of life. A topic that has brought grief to many people must surely be the rising cost of our HDB flats. Some of us who are old enough will remember that a new HDB flat will take 15 to 20 years to be fully paid up. That would have left us with enough time to save for our retirement. However, the prices of HDB flats have skyrocketed and now it takes 30 to 35 years to repay the loan. What does it leave us when we retire? There is no money in our CPF accounts at 65 or 67. Even if we do, whatever little we have will be transferred to our retirement account where it is beyond our reach. Remember the minimum sum that we have to put aside that amount keeps rising every year. With the moving goalposts, how will we ever save enough money for retirement? We are also told that our flats are our assets. We can monetize our assets, they say. If we need money in our old age, we should sell our flats, downgrade to a smaller flat, so that we can have some cash in hand that we can use for our retirement or we can sell the remaining lease to HDB so that we have some money to spend. But wait a minute, what about the retirement scheme again? We have to top up our, accounts for reti our retirement accounts first before the excess can be given to us as cold hard cash. So we are left with two options when we are old and unable to, to support ourselves financially. One, we sell the flat where we have spent most of our lives in. And then we move to another location and a smaller flat. And still may not have very much cash to show for it. Or we sell the remaining lease to HDB and they allow us to stay on for another 30, 35 years depending on how old you are. And again, we still do not have much cash to show. Then we are returned a small sum every month. As we are told that you cannot be trusted with your money, you will spend them all in the casinos. So we, the government says we will give you a small sum every month. Then you won't be a burden to taxpayers when you run out of money. And the poor children will not have to pay more taxes to support the rising cost. So really, how does asset appreciation benefit us? Does it make us richer? Perhaps it does, on paper. My parents bought a three-room HDB flat at $17,000. If they sell it now, they can probably get about $400,000. But they're not going to sell it because they need a roof over their heads. And I have to pay a $400,000 flat because that's the price that I have to pay for my parents who are monetizing or gaining from asset appreciation. For most of us, HDB flat is our only asset. We need a roof over our head. So what if the value of the flats go up? Do we, can we cash out, sell it and stay where? The only people who benefit are probably the permanent residents who cash out, live with lots of cash and be fairly rich in their home country. We Singaporeans have nowhere to go. This is our home. We belong here. When we benefit from the rising cost of housing, our children bear the burden. The next generation will pay a lot more for housing than I paid for my house. 
if we are feeling the heat from the high cost of housing, what about our children? How can they support me when I grow old, when they are busy paying the mortgage for their homes? Do we want to feel richer at the expense of our children? So we cannot expect our children to take care of us. But then again, we cannot expect the government to take care of us either. When we had a large influx of foreign talents and they competed with us for HDB flats, we saw the prices of HDB resale flats climb faster than our wages. When prices of resale flats go up, prices of new HDB flats went up as well. It was made worse when land cost was factored into the prices of the new HDB flats. How do young people who have just entered the workforce and who wants to get married and start a family afford the high cost of HDB flats? With no other choices, our young couples are forced to take huge loans to finance the purchase of their new flats. With a mortgage hanging over their heads, they may end up underemployed or are compelled to stay in jobs that they do not like. Why? Because they cannot afford to lose their jobs. Want to make a mid-career change? Uh-uh, no way. You can't take the risk with your monthly payments looming. Want to start your own business and be your own boss? Hi, <sighs> cannot lah. Cannot afford the three months or four months without pay because there's still the mortgage to pay. Not happy with your current job? Too bad, mate. Suck it up because it'll be difficult to get another job with a stiff competition from the many foreigners who are more than happy to work at a lower pay than you are prepared to take. So you are stuck in the same job. And you better not complain too much or your boss will tell you, not happy, tomorrow don't come to work because there's somebody who is hungrier than you who is willing to work at half your cost. So Singaporeans are squeezed into a corner by both the combination of high housing costs and wage pressures caused by the influx of foreigners who are competing for the same jobs as us. Make no mistake, the SDP is not against immigration. Neither is it against free market. We believe that we need foreign workers to fill those jobs that we are not prepared to do at those low wages. The trouble is, the large influx of foreigners have displaced many PMETs. Many Singaporeans in their mid-40s are suddenly jobless or have to settle for much lower paying jobs or be taxi drivers. Why? Because we all have family to feed, bills to pay. And God forbid, you better not fall sick or you'll be bankrupt. It is really a sad case of money not enough. As though that is not trouble enough, our own government, who is supposed to look after us, its citizens, turn around and say that we are getting lazy, we are not hungry enough, so we deserve to lose our jobs to the foreigners who are hungrier. Are we really getting lazy? No. I consider myself very fortunate as a middle class. I have a comfortable job, fairly good pay, I can afford my three-room flat and perhaps go for holidays once or twice a year. Why do I want to stand up here, join an opposition party, got into trouble with my bosses? I mean, look, we are not paid. Volunteers in SDP are not paid. I don't think we are wealthy, but I can't say that we are corrupt either. So we do it because we care. I never thought that I would be standing here today as a candidate for the SDP, but I do it because I care. This is my country. I believe that I have a stake in this country. Many policies have impact in many areas of our lives. For those of you who are young, perhaps the cost of housing it's not something on your mind right now. When you are in your healthy, fit 20s and 30s, perhaps the cost of healthcare is not at the top of your priority. 
but we really do need to look at all our policies in totality. How do we make sure that our policies are in the best interest of Singaporeans? Only by having more opposition members in Parliament. Not just any opposition members, mind you, but opposition members who are competent, constructive and compassionate. We can be your voice in Parliament. We can challenge the status quo, review assumptions, engage in constructive debates so that the government can craft better policies. Policies that are not just profit generating, but, profit, but policies that really take care of us Singaporeans. We ask that you give us the opportunity to be your voice in Parliament so that we can speak up on issues that are important to you. We care about the future of this little red dot that we call home and we care about the lives of all Singaporeans. We promise to listen to you every day, not once every five years. When you go to the polling booth next Friday, remember to vote for Kong Yin from SDP. Vote for SDP for a better future. SDP, hey! Thank you.